What's up, what's up, Free Life Nation? Pastor Kent Jones here. Um, I got a word from God this, um, in this session about um, how do you move into a new season. A lot of times people uh, had a horrible season or they're in a place of hurt, they're in a place of disappointment, something happened, uh, you know, and you're trying to move forward. I, I, there are certain things that happened in my life where, man, it's just was tough to get past that season. Uh, one season when my, my parents passed, those were seasons where it was like tough to just leave those places uh, in your mind, in your spirit. Uh, and it affected your body, it affected everything that you did with your, your interactions, with your relationships, your, your family, your coworkers or what have you. Everything that, that in that, I guess that season, when you're in that spot, sometimes it's a funk, it's a, it's a horrible place that you're in. It's, it's weird and it's hard to move forward. But we're going to talk about how do you move forward um, um, into an, another season. So let's pray. Father God, we love you. Thank you, God, for this is the day that you've made. We rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, God, that I'm anointed to speak your word. Speak through me. Think through me. None of me. All of you. Thank you that your people are anointed to hear, that they hear the word behind the word. Uh, thank you, for God, for strict and, and clear revelation. Uh, let it flow in Jesus' name. Uh, thank you, God, that people hear the word behind the word. We invite your presence right now. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So let's get it. So, so um, first thing I want to uh, talk about and let you, let you understand is that a season has nothing to do with your calendar. All right. Now, we know we have summer, walk, summer, fall, winter, spring, and those are based off of the calendar. But th these seasons that I'm talking about have nothing to do with a set time, because a lot of times people feel like um, as long as I make it to a certain time, then the season is going to change. That's not how these, this works. A season, like th there are people that can stay the same forever and ever and ever, summer, fall, winter, spring, nothing changes. Because a season is based off revelation, which means you come to know something that you didn't know before, and a new season is, is based in obedience. All right? So it's one thing to hear something, it's another thing to obey it. Uh, here at Free Life, the Lord told me, to lead this generation into the presence of God so that they may hear from God and not only hear from God, but have the boldness to obey. And so there's one thing to hear. There's another thing to obey. So so a new season is based off revelation. And uh, and also obedience. So let's talk about um, revelation. All right. You do what you know. All right. I say this all the time. What you did got you here, but what you're doing keeps you here. All right. What you did got you here, but what you're doing keeps you here. And so revelation is not necessarily it doesn't have anything to do with a set time. So when people start hearing, um, man, it's my season. It's your season. It's your due season. It is your time. All of that has something to do with revelation. It has nothing to do with January, February, March, April, May, that just because June happened, uh, you know, all, all, you know, your hell is going to stop or you, you're getting, getting ready to get a promotion or something's going to happen. No, it has something to do with revelation. Revelation will cause you to know something different. But after you learn something different, you have to move into that thing. All right. And that's where your new season comes. Your new season does not come because of a calendar change. A new season does not come because there, uh, you've endured for, uh, the Bible says weeping endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And joy comes from what you know, all right? Joy comes from what you know, all right? That, that, when, when a loved one goes home to be with the Lord, the only way that I could have sanity when my mom went home to be with the Lord, when my dad went home to be with the Lord, is because of what I know. What, what, I, what I know. I knew they were in heaven. I knew they were with, uh, with God. I knew that they were at the feet of Jesus. And it brought me comfort and it brought me joy because of what I knew. Because based off of my physical, uh, 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 just, just not them not being there, 
and not being able to hear their voice, their audible voice, I hear their spiritual voice all the time, brought me sadness. All right. And the only way I could get out of that season is the revelation of the word of God. Glory be to God. All right. So I want to read something um, uh, uh, and uh, to, to further kind of go into this, that uh, you have to discover your new season. It is not a time. It has to be discovered, which means there's something that you're doing that you have to change in order to go into a new season. There's something that you're doing that you have to stop or there's something that you you're not doing that you have to start in order to go into a new season, a new season that's not based off of, ca of a calendar. All right. So you can't just uh, wait and be the same and expect a new season to come. It's not going to happen like that. All right. You have to one discover, which means revelation. All right. God's going to tell you something. God's going to download something to you. You're going to pray. You're going to declare something. And then he's going to give you a revelation. And then you're going to move on that revelation. And then your new season will come. All right. Now, Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Um, and now uh, in Genesis chapter 11, um, Abraham's dad passed. All right. He, he uh, his, his dad died. His name is Abram at this time. God hadn't changed his name to Abraham yet. All right. And so he doesn't have a covenant with God and uh, he's a worshiper of the moon. And so at this point, he hears from the Lord. All right. And I'm going to read from the King James Version. Uh, chapter 12. I mean, uh, ch yeah, Genesis chapter 12. Here we go. All right. Verse one. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, uh, say, said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and 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 I will make you a great nation. I want to just stop at verse one. All right. Well, let me keep reading. And I will make unto unto thee a great nation. I will bless thee and I will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and I will curse him that curse thee and thee shall all and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. All right. And then verse four says, so Abraham departed. So there's the obedience. Now, here's the here's the thing about God telling Abraham to get out of your country, get out, get away from your kindred. Leave your father's house and go to a land that I will show thee. Why? Because everything that Abram was, it was based off of where he was. So if he was in his uh, native neighborhood or in his hood or everything around him caused him to think like he was thinking. All right. So so God says, leave your neighborhood, your country, leave your father's house. Leave your kin folk, leave them. Don't even bring them with you and go to a place where I'm going to show you because I can't talk to you here. You, you, everything is too familiar. It's last season. You're, you're in last season. You want something different, but you won't leave. Ooh. I can park there. God is trying to talk to you, but there's too much familiarity around you. And he's saying, even before I speak to you, notice the order of how this is going. Before God said, he's telling them what's going to happen when he leaves. All right. When you leave, I'm going to make you a great nation. When you leave, I'm going to uh, bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. When you leave, when you get into a place of familiar, uh, out of a place of familiarity, you already know. Uh, what's down this street and around this corner and what they do over here. You know all the dope spots. You know where the prostitutions, uh, prostitutes hang. You know where they play ball. You know where they gamble. You know everything. Everything's familiar to you. It's too easy for you to slip up and get into something because you're in a place that's familiar to you. So God is saying to Abram, get out of there. Go somewhere where I can talk to you because I don't want to talk to you in an old place. I, it's a new season for you, but that new season is not here. You have to leave. You got to leave your country. You have to leave your uh, uh, your kindred. 
You got to leave your father's house. You, you see how that, that, that is? The country, your kindred, your father's house. Your country, your kindred, your father's house. So God is saying that I want you to, because all of that stuff has a, a, a bearing on, on how you react. Those rules and regulations I'm trying to free you from, but you got to leave. All right. And so verse four says, so Abraham departed. Now, when Abraham departed, um, you know how uh, uh, the, the chapter talks about God says, look at the stars. All right. I'm going to bless thy seed to outnumber the stars. Look at the sand. All right. You're on the beach. Look at the sand, the grains of sand. I'm going to give you a seed to outnumber that. So in order for God to start putting a new vision in his head and in his mind so he can imagine something, because remember, Abraham doesn't have any seed, any seed or any children. So he's like, you're showing me something that I've never seen. My wife is barren. You're telling me to leave. I'm I'm old. And so you're telling me to start over at this age? Leave everything that I knew? That's why they call him the father of faith. All right, so he's, he's leaving, he's moving, and he goes into a place that's unfamiliar, and God starts to show him how things are going to go in the future. So what am I saying to you? There are certain things that's too familiar uh, in this season. All right, you believe in God for a new season, but you're in an old funk. Everything is familiar. The music that you do is, you know, you got to change it. Uh, sometimes people, let me tell you something. Sometimes when I come into a new season, I change my hair. I just feel like, man, I'm doing something different now, and I, I'm going to change my appearance. I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, cut my beard. Uh, uh, you know, and that's for me personal. That's not a spiritually deep thing, but it's just to tell me, and when I go into the uh, look into the mirror that I'm in a new place, it's a reminder to me to say I'm in, I'm in a new place. All right. I'm not wearing these clothes. Let's get these clothes away. Let's give these shoes away. Let's let, this is last season. You ever seen um, somebody old school that that's still wearing the same outfit? Somebody told him uh, in 1977, boy, you know, you look good in that outfit. And he was like, I do. I do. I do. And so 1987, you know, all right, you still look good in it, but it's 10 years later, 1997. All right, you still in the, you hadn't changed and you still looking around like, boy, I look good because he's stuck in a season. He's stuck in an old season. He won't upgrade. He won't update everything. So he feels like he's still in 1977. When he's in 2017 or 2027, where all of that stuff is irrelevant now. All right. And so when you're trying to discover a new season, you have to do something that nobody wants to do. And that's change. That's change. So when you discover that God, that first of all, it's a decision of the person uh, uh, that, you know, you want to go to the next season. So you start with prayer. All right, Lord, I'm, I'm hurt. You know, I, I just got out of this relationship and this is not necessarily it doesn't necessarily have to be husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. A friend could hurt you. A sibling could hurt you or whatever. God, I'm hurt right now. And just everything, you know, you, church hurt, whatever. People try to uh, pastors are trying to argue against church hurt and, and say that it, it doesn't exist. You have to do something. No, church hurt is very real. All right. Um, 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 and so, um, but they just don't want to change. Anyway, um, and so when you discover that you don't want to be in that funk anymore, in that, that space anymore, in that place anymore, all right, you pray. All right, Lord, help me. I do not want to be in this. I'm hurt. Please take this hurt away from me. Please take this pain away from me. Um, use me. I'm yours. All right. You start praying that prayer. What's going to happen next is a download from heaven. An answered prayer is going to come. And the first thing God's going to tell you to do is to get rid of the familiar. All right. This is where the debate comes where is it a sin to do this? And is it a sin to do that? And is it wrong to when God is downloading something into your spirit to answer your prayer? You want to say, oh, but 
I want, I want you to change the situation, God, but I don't want to change. I want you to change the situation, but I don't want to change. I, 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 I want you to make me a millionaire, but I still don't want to, I don't want to do nothing different. Lord, I, I, you know, I want you to help, help me lose weight, but I, but I still don't want to do nothing different. And so the whole thing about change out here is change in here. All right. And, and when you ch before you change in here, you got to change here as a man thinks in his heart. So is he. So. So therefore, you have to be willing to change. And most of the time, people don't want to change. So they start to look in the Bible to try to see how they, they, can, they can walk this thin line. You know, God told you, let's say God said, uh, I want you to create a new atmosphere. Uh, the old music that you listen to. I don't want you to listen to it no more. All right. Some of your friends, you know, they're good friends. Y'all have good laughs, but I want you to spend less time with them. All right. You'll go to the a lot of people, religious people will go to the scriptures and say, well, ain't nothing wrong. It ain't in the Bible that I can't uh, be a friend with you. And it ain't in the Bible that I can't uh, listen to this type of music. And it ain't in, in the Bible here, here, here. Yeah, but God is talking to your spirit and giving you a conviction based off of what you pray. If you want me to answer your prayer, these are the things that has to happen. All right. So a lot of times people don't they don't want to change. And so they stay in that funk and they complain God and they say God hasn't answered my prayer. No, he has answered your prayer, but you won't get thee out of that country, get thee out of that neighborhood. Stop. Uh, stop dealing with the same people. Everything is familiar. Even if you ain't in sin, things are too familiar to you. So God can't talk to you or even if he's talking, you won't listen. It's, it's, it's amazing that sometimes somebody come to you for advice. And then when you're giving them the advice, they won't listen or they tell you, yeah, I did that. No, I, I'm, I'm, no, I did that. Yeah, I did that. Already. You didn't do it. You, you, you think you did it. But if you ain't willing to do it over and over and over or change your life, you're going to get the same results. All right. And so. Um, um, that's one thing. So you understand that the first thing when you discover God's going to give you revelation about what you need to do to go into your new season or your due season. He's going to give you revelation, which means he's going to speak to your heart, which means he's going to tell you something specific that nobody really can sign off on. But you man, God is telling me to do this. God is telling me to do that. It's not going to be in the thou shalt nots all the time. What do you mean I have to give my whole shoe collection away? What do you mean that I have to give my car away? Or I had, listen. Before uh, when 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 COVID started that whole season where, they, where everything shut down, the Lord told me to do a voluntary repo on my Cadillac. God, man. He asked me for my Isaac. <laughs> you want me to do a, a man? That's how I pull up, bro. That's and I'm telling you, that was one of the best decisions that I made. One, because God was trying to elevate me and elevate our ministry. But my mind was stuck on something. One of my old passions, which was a Cadillac. I'm from Florida. My daddy had a Cadillac. My granddaddy had a Cadillac. And, I, and, and my saying is the only lack in my life is a Cadillac. And, you know, so, you know, you got to have a caddy in your life. And so I've been riding caddy for 15 years. Got uh, had one Cadillac, you know, got rid of that one, got another one. And like, you know, I'm going back to the caddy life. But God said, you know what, if you if you don't have a Cadillac, will you still serve me? All right. If you have to pull up in your family sedan. Will you still serve me? You're begging me for this new season and you, you got to go into a land of unfamiliar so I could talk to you, so I could speak to you so that so that the things are not normal. There are too many people that don't even respect your gifts and anointing and you're around them and you're expecting God to do some type of miraculous thing. And he's wanting you to move. Jesus couldn't even do certain things in his native land. He had to, he did more abroad than he did in a place of familiarity. 
And so in, in a new season, if you want a new season, if you want your life to change, when God starts downloading stuff to your spirit, get away from some of the people that you hang around. Change your music. Change what you watch. If you're having bad dreams, then that, bad dreams uh, 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 is, a, is evidence sometimes of what you've been, the seeds that you've been planting in your heart. All right? Video games that you've been playing. Movies that you've been watching. All right? If you want to get rid of that, God's going to tell you what to stop. Now, at that point, you have to be willing to stop those things and then your new season will come. See, everybody wants to, 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 to they want me, you want me to tell you that your new season is here just based off of you enduring the last season. I can't tell you that. That's, my job is to keep it 100 with you. I cannot tell you that you're going to go into a new season if you haven't gotten the revelation that God is trying to give you. I can't tell you that. Man, my confession for a long time is that, man, I'm going to lose this weight. I'm going to lose this weight. And God was telling me exactly what to do. I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> so I knew what to do. I had the revelation. Just wouldn't do it. All right? So you can't go into a new season if you won't be obedient. All right? And so in this, in this season of your life, in this season of our lives, let's, let us have the boldness to change our atmosphere. Man, if you're in the funk, if you're in depression, depression... Um, um, comes from, from information. Uh, everything pulls from your past. Depression comes from your past. You have to go into your future and start to imagine and not to just remember. You have to imagine and not just remember. Yeah, when you remember things from your past, it's going to make you, you, you can pull things from your past and make you happy. You can pull things from your pa past, it makes you sad. Um, but when you start to imagine uh, uh, and, 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 and start to say, man, I would love to do that and I would love to do that and I would love to do that. And you start to speak things into your future and you, you start to use the power of the tongue to, to, to speak things. Then you get out of because God starts giving you revelation of how to get out of where you are. Man, I'm telling you, uh, my family, we've moved a lot. Especially since being a pastor, I think I moved five times. I think I moved every year that Free Life has been in existence. All right? And I feel like as a family, every move that we made, God moved us up. It's almost like we skipped 20 years. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Like we skipped 20, 30 years with the move. It's like, yep, you got that lesson. You went through the hard times and through that. Boom, you move. Go, move. Go, move, new season, go, move, go, move, new revelation, go, move, 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 new. There, there's something that you're coming into. And so with that revelation, I believe God moved us. Now, in this season, I'm moving again. <laughs> Woo! I'm moving again, but this move is, some, is a little different. God is getting ready to establish his kingdom in my family. Hallelujah. We've been declaring, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And sometimes our involvement, it, 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 it's painful. It's a sacrifice. You have to spend your money. People are going to talk about you. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to say that you missed it. You have to stay the course. Hallelujah. But when there's something new that's happening and you want to get out in the old season, mm-mm. You got to be willing to change. And glory be to God. I, I, I just said, Lord, I want you so bad. And I want, I want the intimacy with you. And I want change in my life. And I want the anointing in my life. And I want you to use my family, every single member of my family. I want the anointing to flow through that. Tell me what I have to do. Tell me what I have to sacrifice. Give this up. Give that up. Oh, man, you need to spend more time with your family. Where, where, you got to give up your beat machine. You got to get, why? Because that's clogging your relationships. You know, every time you go to that studio, you, you, you become, uh, uh, it was here before your kids. So, so it breaks the relationship with them. And now I got to teach you how to be a producer and produce their lives as well. You, I got, you're stuck. You're stuck. You're stuck, so are you willing to give up the familiar? 
Woo, I haven't had a, a studio to produce in because I've been doing everything for free life and, and, and gave my stuff up. I haven't been really to, been able to walk into a studio space for about six, seven months. And God is getting ready to restore that in my life because I was a good steward over this season. And now I got new revelation. I got new revelation. I've been mixing more of my kids' music than my own. And I love it. The revelation. What revelation? You got to spend more time. You got to show them how to do it. You got to show them how, 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 because now you're still trying to do your thing and you are praying for me to use your kids, but you won't move. There are, there are rappers. Listen to me, man. I love y'all. There are rappers and singers that are singing out of season. Your anointing is out of season. Not that God didn't call you, but what you're doing is out of season and you won't change. Most of that change. Let me tell you something. Listen to me. It's going to come when you start to mix and help your kids. Your kids, it seems like they have a fresher interpretation of your anointing. So I'm learning, you know, to go in there and let Love Jones approve my outfits, make sure I own, I'm not dressing like we used to dress in 2005 with the big, long, baggy T-shirts, you know, cash money taking over for the 99 and the 2000, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wear, you know, big, you know, clothes and all that type of stuff. I got to make sure I'm relevant. Now that stuff will come back, but I got to make sure I'm relevant and, and I run it by fresh eyes. I let my kids, uh, I, you know, I listen to their music and the freshness that's in it has rejuvenated my ideas. The season now, now my season is, is getting ready to st I'm getting ready to go to a new season in my music because I was willing to get rid of or give back or give up the old season. That's tough. Yep, some of y'all need to help your kids. Help your kids write a rap, it'll help you better. We use the old cliches when the kids got all the new lingo, all of that type of stuff when you mix with the youth. Your kids. Amen. New season. All right? Last thing I want to say about being a, a, a new season is you got to give up selfishness. This, God just put this in my, my spirit. When, when God came to Abraham... Get thee out of that country. Say, I'm going to bless you and bless them. That, and then he says, everybody through you are going to be blessed because of your decision. Some of our blessings and some of our seasons and some of the things that we want to go into is all about us. And God is trying to move you into a season where people can be blessed through you. If your new season is only about your house, your car, your stuff, your this then you're not changing. You're still selfish. But if it's about who you can bless through your moves, then that's a season that's going to be endorsed by heaven. All right? So, obedience. Obedience. When God downloads to you what to do, what to change, and a lot of times you don't want to change, a lot of times you don't want to... Do, do things different, change your music, change your movies, change your friends, change your boyfriend, change your girlfriend. A new season comes with change. Obedience. It is not a time of year. All right. You get the revelation. What God wants you to change He's going to tell you specifically what you need to do and have the boldness to do it. Hallelujah. All right. So I declare in Jesus name. Glory be to God. Rabbi, Baba, shake it that this is your new season, that God will give you the revelation on what to do and you'll have the boldness to do what he's telling you to do. Hallelujah. And that the results of that move will be nothing but blessings. Hallelujah. Blessings. You are blessed. Me and my wife, we used to declare that we are millionaires, billionaires. The Lord told me you're blessed. Millionaire and billionaires under that. I'm blessed. 
I have the blessing running in, in my life. Hallelujah. And so do you. Glory be to God. Why, uh, let, me, let me say this real quick. The reason why millionaire and billionaire is under being blessed, because if you have a terminal illness, there's nothing that that money can do for you. If you if you get in a situation where somebody break your heart, there's nothing that that money can do for you. You could go indulge in something that, that you know, that gives you uh, temporary pleasure. But being blessed is a whole nother level of existence. And so I'm blessed. You need to say out loud. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Say it again. I'm blessed. Glory be to God. All right. Let me pray so we so we can get out of here. Father God, we love you. We praise you for your word. Thank you, God, that your people are, are, are getting the revelation of the moves that they need to make in their lives. And thank you that they have the boldness to make those moves. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you, God, that everybody will be blessed around us because of these moves and that we are willing to do the tough things that it take to go into this new season. We praise you, God. We love you. We thank you. Listen, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, heaven is real, hell is real. The day you hear the voice of the Lord, harden not your heart. I'm going to say this prayer. I need you to repeat this prayer after me and get saved right now. Don't wait another day. Don't wait another minute. Hallelujah. Say this with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I repent of my sins. I turn my back on my wicked ways and I turn my heart towards you, I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord. I believe in my heart that you died for my sins and you rose on the third day for me. Today, I am saved. If you said that prayer for the first time, welcome to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. You are saved. Listen, um, 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 become a part of this free life nation. Uh, we're uh, an invisible nation, which means we don't necessarily just do things for our uh, local body. We, we, we kind of make moves for, for everybody. So, uh, you know, by faith, you know, come run with us, man. Uh, we love you. And, you know, every time that we go to a different city, a, a, a different state or even a different country, we want to connect with you guys, and some of y'all are just going to travel with us from city to city, state to state. Uh, some, some people will help us build in that city. And so become a part of the Free Life Nation, man. Hit us up. Uh, this email is freelifecdc at gmail.com. Again, freelifecdc at gmail.com. We love to come to your city. We love to come to your area, bring our movement, come do a concert, pray, declare, and, 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 and we declare that the kingdom of God will come uh, and his will will be done in that area. All right? So we love you, man. Connect with us. We'll see you soon.